Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be doing a quick recap here of all the signings and trades that happened over July 4th and July 5th. We'll get all of that coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here at the Nintendo Talkie Channel. Now before we end this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. Thank you for your support, we're able to love you guys, so if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe button down below. And hopefully you'll comment down in the comment section below, so let's all discuss today's video. Now, as usual, we're going to start today's video off by looking at some signings from our past couple of days. Uh, so, just a quick recap here of all the signings that happened between the 4th and the 5th. Uh, we also missed a couple on the July 3rd, so we'll get to all those here too. Uh, so, the Seattle Kraken have signed 6th, 7th defenseman Josh Mahura to a one-year league minimum deal. Should be a decent addition there for the Kraken on the defensive end. So a pretty good pickup there for Seattle. Then we saw the Golden Knights extend uh, Akira Schmid. They let him go. Did not qualify him, but he brought him back on a two-year deal with AFU Angels $75,000. Should be a solid third stringer there for the Knights this year. Uh, the Ducks signed Carson Mayer to a one-year league minimum deal. Uh, that should be a really good pickup there for the Ducks. Uh, Justin Kirkland signs a one-year league minimum deal in Calgary, so that's a pretty good pickup there for the Flames. Uh, both are probably AHL players who have call-up options. Uh, then the Sharks signed Andrew Portolowski to a two-year deal with AV of $800,000. Should be a decent call up option as well. Those are all the signings they missed on July 3rd. On July 4th, they only had a handful of signings. The Detroit Red Wings have uh, signed Tony Dello to a one year league minimum deal. Should be a call up option, potentially playing at the AHL level next year. Uh, then we saw the Carolina Hurricanes sign Jack Roslovic. Pretty good pickup there for the uh, Canes. One year, $2.8 million AAV deal. Uh, then we saw the Washington Capitals sign Alex Limoges, who should be an AHL player next year. One year league minimum deal. And then we saw the Sharks sign two of the players who they picked up uh, via trade. Who are RFAs to two year deals. Grunstrom and Dalandre are both got two year deals. Grunstrom a $1.8 million AV, Dalandre a $1.3 million AV. So interesting pickups there for the Sharks, but they do extend some players. And then on July 5th, which was yesterday, we saw a plethora of signings. At first, Ottawa signed Gian Janik, who they acquired in a trade we'll talk about in a second, uh, to a one year deal with the AV of League Minimum. Should be a call up option, could even play on the four group. The Buffalo Sabres and Henry Yoki Haru to a one year $3.1 million deal. Pretty good pickup there for the Sabres. Uh, the Flames and three ELCs. Uh, first was Morin, who I think was in last year's draft, to a three-year $93,000 ELC. And then they also signed Zane Parekh, who was the ninth overall pick, and Matt Vie Gurdon, who was the 28th overall pick in this year's draft, to three-year ELCs with AVs of $975,000. So good to see those guys get ELCs. Uh, the Florida Panthers signed Jacob Megna to a one-year league room deal. Should be a, a decent seventh defenseman or a call-up option. Uh, the Penguins signed Corey Andonofsky, who was RFA, to a one-year league room deal. Should be a solid call-up option there for the Penguins. Penguins. Uh, Seattle Kraken signed Eli Tolvanen to a two-year deal with AV $3.475 million. So that's one of their big RFAs taken off the board. And then they also signed Berkeley Catan to an ELC. He gets a three-year ELC with AV of $975,000, the eighth overall pick in this year's uh, draft. So that's another guy who gets an his ELC. Utah signs a new third stringer, Jackson Stalaber. He gets a one-year deal with AV really minimum. Should be a solid third stringer for the uh, Utah franchise. Uh, the Washington Capitals signed an ELC with their first round prospect from this year's draft. And that is Tarek Periscat. He gets a three-year ELC with AV of $975,000. Should be a good pick up there for the Cavs to get him on his ELC. He was the 17th overall pick. Uh, then we saw the LA Kings send Caleb Jones to a one-year league minimum deal. Should be a solid third pair, seventh defenseman for the Kings. We saw Colorado Avalanche and RFA Jason Paul in one-year league minimum deal. Should be a solid pick up there for the Avalanche. And then we saw the Anaheim Ducks sign three players. Uh, one was Beckett Senek, who was the third overall pick. Uh, one was Sion Solberg, who was the 23rd overall pick in this year's draft. Uh, both get three year $975,000 ELCs. And then they also signed Pavel Regonda on a one year league minimum deal, who should be a solid bomb six edition there for the Ducks. So interesting stuff there for the Ducks. And for all these teams who get some uh, solid signings there, I mean, good to see Senek, Solberg, Periskak, uh, Katan, Perek, and Gurdan all get their ELCs after year checked it a couple of days ago. Uh, good to see some other interesting signings like Tolvanen extending in Seattle, uh, Yoki Haru extending in Buffalo, Magna going to Florida, uh, Stauber going to Utah, uh, Jones going to LA, San Jose re up in Grinstrom and uh, Del Andrea, Roswell going to Carolina. Uh, so some interesting signings from over the past couple of days and we've had some interesting moves from over the past couple of days. And lastly, to wrap up this video, going over to a couple of uh, players who have been dealt. Uh, I might have not touched on this in my video, but on July 3rd, we saw Robbie Fabry and a conditional 2025 fourth round pick from the Detroit Red Wings be dealt to 
Anaheim in exchange for Gage Alexander. Fabry's entering the final year of a $4 million deal. Sawmill, six forward, has some injury history, but should be a guy who can put up 15 to 20 goals a season. Just thought that's a solid addition there for the Ducks. That's not the top six addition I was hoping for them to get, but I think that's a pretty good pickup there for the Ducks. They also get a fourth round pick in 2025, which will be either Detroit or Boston's, whichever one's higher. So pretty good pickup there for the Ducks to get a fourth round pick and Fabry. Meanwhile, the Red Wings get Gage Alexander. Alexander was a 2021 fifth rounder of the Ducks and in the final year of his DLC coming off a season where he played in the ECHL and put up an 887 save percentage. So looks like a pretty good prospect. I think eventually could be a solid backup for the Red Wings. So it's another solid prospect there in the Red Wings organization. So a pretty good pickup there for the Red Wings, but a solid pickup there for the Ducks to get Fabry. Uh, then we saw a surprising deal. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres moved Matthew Savoy to the Oilers in exchange for McLeod and Tulio. That's an interesting move there for the Oilers and the Sabres. For the Oilers, they do move on from the third line center. They do move on from a decent prospect, but they get Matthew Savoy, who was a couple of years removed from being the ninth overall pick, entering the first year of his ELC, coming off a season where he had five points in six games over in the AHL, and also had 34 uh, WHL games, putting up 71 points. So he looks fantastic, and I think eventually Savoy could be a solid second line center, especially in a team like the Edmonton Oilers. So that's a pick up there for the Oilers. The Sabres, we all get McLeod and Tulio, a McLeod center, and a final year of a two year, $2.1 million AAV deal, coming off his best season to date, putting up 12 goals a career high and 30 points a career high in 81 games play. I've seen a lot of Sabres fans not like this deal, but McLeod is a solid two way center, speedy guy who can put up some points. I think eventually could be a solid 20 goal scorer for a team like this. Just a pick up, pick up there for the uh, Sabres. I know losing his voice is not overly great. They also get Tyler Tulio, who was a fifth round pick in the 2020 draft. Uh, he's in the final year of his ELC. He's coming off a season where he had 21 points in 54 AHL games. So it looks like eventually could be a solid bomb, maybe middle six forward there for the Sabres. So that's a, a decent move. It's a little bit surprising for the Sabres to move on from Savoy already. But I've seen a lot of Sabres people say this might have been the guy who they were targeting to move on from if they were to move on from a top prospect. It's just a little bit weird to see McLeod and Tulio be the only two things going back. So interesting stuff there for the Oilers. Then I also saw Jets acquire the signing rights to Dylan Coughlin in exchange for future considerations going to Carolina. It's a pretty good pickup there for the Jets. I mean, they needed some more defensive help after the losses of guys like Brandon Dillon and a couple of those other guys. So they wound up acquiring Dylan Coughlin. Like we said, he's an RFA, so he's getting a new deal. Coming off a season where he had 41 points in 61 AHL games and also got into one game of NHL action, putting up no points. So that's a pretty good pickup there for the Jets to get Coughlin. So interesting stuff there for Jets to get Coughlin. But those are all the moves we've had over the past couple of days. Those are three trades. Those are a handful of signings. So definitely up to you guys' thoughts on what you think about all these moves. Down in the comment section below, what do you think about Savoy being dealt? What do you think about Faber being dealt? What do you think about some of the other guys being signed? Uh, the guys in the 2024 draft getting their ELCs. What do you think about Dylan Dre getting signed, uh, Tolvanen getting signed, Stauber, Magna. And one thing I did forget to mention really quickly here was that the Senators and Utah franchise also made a swap on July 3rd. Uh, the Senators acquired Jan Jenik, a signing rates from the Utah in exchange for Igor Shokilov signing rates. Both are really good prospects who I think eventually could be sell bomb six forward. So interesting swap there for a sense and Utah to make a swap there of Jenik for Sokilov. So once again, interesting stuff happened. What do you think about all these moves? Let me know what you think now in the comment section below. So I want to talk about for today. We're going to tell you this video. If you liked it, remember to subscribe down below. Thank you all for your support. We're going to be able to without you guys. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe button down below. Don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below. So we're going to discuss today's video. Also a blog, talk about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that. So we check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.